I am really am materials led, whether it's um, the canvas, the wool, the paper, I've got to get something in my hands and I've got to make with it. I don't think too much about it, I don't do loads of drawings, I don't keep copious sketchbooks. This, this room is my working sketchbook. I find and I make and in making I progress and that's how my tapestries evolve. Um, my making life is, is very varied and I, and I find that really essential. I've got, I've got the tapestries which I absolutely adore doing but I've also got everything that happens in this workroom that I do have deadlines for and commitments to. So I have to leave the tapestry, I have to come here and do this. I've got a beautiful garden that I have to, uh, I don't have to, I want to maintain and that, that is one of life's passions and um, I just go between everything and all those different aspects, all those different avenues that I go down, they all feed one another. The garden feeds the tapestries, the paperwork feeds the tapestries, the colours, the colours in this room. I mean, my, my colour palette is very, well I say it's very muted, I think I, think I do use a lot of colour but it's, it's, it's as if it's turned down a few notches on the on the on the old dial it, it's not screaming loud it, it's subtle but it's there I mean my my real palette of choice is um, the colors of um, a beach beautiful greys and um, steely blues and, uh, and because I holiday a lot in the Outer Hebrides, they're, they're the colours that I really love. But I do, and, and I live with those colours. They're the colours in my house. They're the colours I choose to decorate with. Quite a calm environment. But I do like to inject it with um, snapshots of colour here and there. And all the vintage papers that I use in this room, they obviously influence my tapestry colour palette. I, I always say I can't handle loud bright colour and I, and I can't en masse but I can put a background of it in as long as you know as long as everything else is is quite toned down. I, I, I do I do love to play with colour um, but it but it's on my terms. I just thought this is something I can do and I, and I wrote to Hugh and amazingly got um, a, an immediate response and went down to see him and he commissioned me to do a seashell piece. Uh, up until that point I had never done a needlepoint tapestry in my life so it was another one of those self-taught skills. Everything I've done so far I just seem to have got the materials and figured it out and I just got an article on how to do tent stitch, I think it was, and um, yeah, bought myself some canvas and just started and absolutely loved it. I find the limitations absolutely necessary. I think if I had unlimited colours and unlimited boundaries, I would be completely unable to function. I find making decisions hard enough as it is and I really like the discipline of the canvas. I, I even like the grid. There's something, and because I like to do representational things, whether it's a, a flower or a dog's head or a cow or a sheep or whatever, I just get a real kick out of being able to make that work with, with the limits that I've got. And it's, it's quite tricky when you're working on, on a square grid and you've got the shape of a dog's head and a cow and all those sort of things. But, but I can, it's, it's something I find quite easy and, um, and I just, uh, yeah, I really like it.
I'm doing a series for Hugh uh, which is based on the idea of cigarette cards or tea cards. When you used to get the little card in the packet of tea and save it and put it in an album. So you have a repeated image, a repeated series of, of images. And I've always liked that design idea anyway. And it's great for me as a stitcher because I can concentrate on one section at a time and move on. With, with the dogs, which is the latest one, how I got to the finished piece, I, first of all, you go around looking at everybody's dog and taking photographs. And then you take those photographs and turn them into photocopies and either translate directly from the photocopy or draw from that and adjust the sizes get them all fitting within the within the format of the cushion and then with the dogs it was a dog a day one dog one day you start off with the eyes if I can get those eyes looking out at me if I can see that little face then I was off so I, I managed to do a dog every day for 12 days <laughs> You have to think about the person who's going to do the stitching. And I think it's really nice to give customers a bite-sized piece that they can do in a chunk of time. But most people are really busy and I suspect a lot of people do tapestries in their quiet times, in their spare times, and when they've only got quite a small amount of time in which to do it. And I think if they've got limits, if they can think, well, I'll do that boxer's head today, then that's great. And, it, and it, it, gives, it gives them limits that eventually builds up into a much larger picture.